meetings are about to begin. Find your workstations, sit down, shut up. Your attention is mandatory. This is not an excuse to goof off. The director is terminating slackers liberally. Any complaints should be filed with the Human Resources Office located on the far side of the minefield. Gentlemen, everything is set for broadcast. Oh God, this is no way to live. Gentlemen, I have pressing news. There's been a development in our... Where's Chris? No idea. Helpful. I'm not his keeper. I have enough to do around here. My arbitrary job assignments are anything but arbitrary. Yeah, as the name suggests. You're more snippy than usual. I'm assigning you to the search party. No man is left behind. Unless it's convenient for me. Just assign a bunch of NPCs to do it. I'm busy. And we don't know, even know that he's missing. It must be that he was kidnapped. It's the only thing that makes sense. Have you tried calling him? You know I don't engage in social interaction. Fine, I'll try. No, you will alert the kidnappers. We must maintain the appearance of stupidity. If they know we're onto them, Chris may be as good as dead. Appearances, yep. Was there notes or demands of some kind? None as of yet, but perhaps we just haven't found it yet. Good kidnapping plan. Shanghai somebody and don't leave a note. That will really get your point across. Damn, if it is China, getting him out will be difficult. Business dealings in Asia go south? No, the flight is forever long. Oh yeah, what was I thinking? Nobody's been to Shanghai for like 150 years. I wasn't serious. It's the best lead we've got so far. What if he's just home or late? Unlikely. Dead? Unfortunate, but that's what the clones are for. Never as fun as the previous model, but they serve. Clones? Yes, of course. I have clones of all of you. Since when? Since Project Pet Cemetery and the Lazarus Soup. That's what you were doing with that? What did you think it was for? The only thing it's ever produced was aggressive white rabbits, the guard treasure. Well, they were the tests and fortunate byproduct. What did you think? All those accidents and somehow you're all still walking around fine like nothing ever happened? Clone all of you. Holy shit. Why? Hiring sucks. What about the failures? Uh, the mess hall sponsored by Soylent or Blue or something. Green. That's the one. I'm ordering lunch today. Good plan. I'll join you and we could talk about real-time strategy games while we stake out Chris's place for the kidnappers. Nobody kidnapped him. You're paying. Of course. Fun fact. I reimbursed myself from everyone's salary at the end of the year. I thought it was fun. It, it, it was fun. So episode RTS, why do you think they died? People will argue that they're not dead, but they kind of niche down to the point where they are absolutely out of the mainstream. Or if people are playing them, they don't realize that they're playing them. They don't realize it's an RTS. They, they've changed. They've matured. So RTSs growing up were, was kind of a thing that it was an us thing, particularly you and me. Yeah. Other friends dropped in and out, but... You know, we were the core duo. Well, I think I was more into them to, than you, to be honest. And I think that you, because of our friendship, put up with playing them at first. The Civ games? Yeah. Well, But then we started playing other ones, like e more combative. Even Warcraft 2, I felt like, was not your cup of tea. It was rough. Or Command and Conquer. <laughs> well, Command and Conquer got more action-oriented as well as, like, Warcraft 3. Yeah, but the original oh Command God, Conquer, Frozen the Throne. like bit bit one, <laughs> top down isometric nonsense. Yeah, yeah. Is that a tank or is it what is that? You could tell they were uh, tanks, but they were they were uh, worse than Minecraft in terms of blockiness. <laughs> they, they were, but mm, I guess they're endearing now. I would call them endearing. I don't know how long. I yeah, would play I, I would if I go back, back and play them just for nostalgia's sake. Did you ever play uh, Dune? The the um, Rise of Curse. No. Yeah, that one was very, uh, very low bit. <laughs> that was a PC title? What was that? Like a Windows 95 or before? DOS? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you could still download it if you want. Yep. Look at that. How quaint. <laughs> 92 was when that one came out. My Lord in Heaven. Yep. It looks positively wow. Mm -hmm. That was Good probably my Anya. first RTS. That was your first. Okay. I think one of the Command and Conquer was, no, it might have been Warcraft 2. That might have been what I, you introduced me to them. That was not something that was going to be played in my household. 
Yeah, Command and Conquer was definitely um something I was near and dear to. I was I was all over well, I got introduced to Westwood by Dune and then they made Command and Conquer, so I was all over all of that all the Command and Conquers after that. I played the shit out of that. <laughs> hmm. And then Warcraft 2 was probably my introduction to Warcraft as well. Um, I think that was most people's. I actually went back like later. I think it was like 97 or 98 to play Warcraft 1. That was a mistake. <laughs> significant improvements were made. <laughs> yes, yes. Significant improvements. Let's see here. The one that I have the most memories with is probably Warcraft 3, at least from that time period. Um, from that time period? Maybe Age of Empires? I have a lot of memories. Okay. Of. Yeah. Yeah, because um, Age of Empires w- was like what got me to appreciate history and evolution and like how how we've progressed from like timeline it basically got me through like uh elementary history and social studies and all that <laughs> oh okay i could see that that's that's pretty cool actually i was wrong so well warcraft uh three was actually 2002 released. yes yeah, yeah. Hmm. i was playing so uh, Age of mythology and gangsters too around that time we played age of mythology as recent as what was it 2015 2016 i think we played it like two years ago to be honest just like one game <laughs> like we just read all re-downloaded it and play one game or that might be, have been with my brothers uh, it might have been so the last play through that i have is july 10th of 2016 so we're coming up on eight years ago wow that was uh i would play that again right now <laughs> so die age of mythology is just so good <laughs> oh my god was it and then the remake is coming back can't yeah. wait for that. Yeah, the, the reskin. It's basically a reskin, right? Who knows? It looks like a reskin. Yeah, they might put, put some features in there, I guess. If they give me a reskin, I won't care. I'm down. <laughs> All right. So, so what's your, your favorite RTS? That's, that's hard. Because there's ones that I keep near and dear for sentimental value. I would have to say it's probably Age of Mythology. Mm-hmm. Even though the one that actual enjoyment that i play and play through is probably starcraft mm, for me it was gangsters too yeah i know i talked about it on a previous one but uh yep. i played the shit out of that game from, from like like i'm still looking for like gangsters 3 basically <laughs> isn't that a canceled uh project um the c- company basically got dissolved bought out slash bought out the ip still oh, there I, I think um gog might have it now but um i'm not sure if they're doing anything with it or plan to but it's basically on freeware games now and i can play it but so unlikely unless somebody picks it up yeah it's going to be like someone like rediscovers the game or some coder rediscovers it and is a passion project of theirs and they'll reskin it or something bring it into the be a cool community project yeah I, I bet someone out there will risk it one day. Most likely. But but the, the gameplay was so great. Story was so great. Got to be like basically, you know, um, an up, upstart gangster and uh, develop your empire, make a, a legal uh, brothels and stuff and back rooms of your buildings and stuff. Do you know what I remember about that game? You played that game? I didn't play it, but I remember my father brought it up because he had heard about it i think it was on howard stern they somebody had talked about it and it was right when online games were happening and it was like the the mainstream had started for games yeah it was uh early 2000s so that makes sense yeah and my dad was talking about it interested in playing and then we didn't have a, a pc at, at the time that was capable of doing anything other than word processing so uh, yeah that's how long ago that was yeah yeah early 2000s where it was a different time the internet was just basically starting to uh really launch out 
It was basically around when YouTube really started coming up, right? That uh, the internet boom kind of happened? Yeah, like right after the internet boom. Because the internet boom was the 90s. It was basically the internet like fall or breakout of uh, which companies were going to make it or not. Oh, the tech bubble popping. <laughs> yeah. One of my other favorite ones was uh, Rome Total War. Yep. Played the shit out of that. I remember. I remember you coming in. What did we have? We had demo boxes when we I worked at that place where you stopped for games. Ah. Uh, and oh, I, I I was looking forward to that for a long time. So we took down the front standee, and then like you didn't know we took that down. You saw the standee. You had pre-ordered the game and everything. Yep. But you didn't see that we had moved to the back PC section, which was not very big. Um, the demo boxes, and you came in and you, you picked it up. What is this shit? Is this real or is this fake? No, it's fake, man. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was a time for me. Gentlemen, we interrupt this broadcast for shameless self-promotion. End in the middle because it's evil and hilarious. Subordinates, have you subscribed yet? Commented? Liked? Left a review? No? Would you kindly? It's unbecoming of an evil empire to solicit the love and affection of its loyal patrons. Your support is appreciated. And mandatory. Like your attention. That was an interesting time for me as well, because although I only played probably less than 100 hours of it, um, that was a lot of further history learning that I, I went and did. Like, this is really awesome. Yeah, the amount of history in a lot of these, like, RTS games is just, like, really deep for a game. It really is, I'm, which is why I'm curious that it's not a more popular genre, because they've struggle to include interesting stories or history into other games like Assassin's Creed is struggling right now but in the past they've included as much of interesting history as they could they could for whatever frame that they were aiming for I'm surprised that more games aren't leaning into it like RTS they were not afraid to bring up some of the most arbitrary esoteric <laughs> yeah <laughs> very specific things in history and the whole time when you're playing if you were to take that slice and, you know, out of context, not interesting at all. But now I'm eight hours in, I'm on my fourth battle with, I don't even know who. And, uh, you know, it might be interesting to know. Do you remember when um, some grand strategy games used to do, like, if you failed to do it historically accurate way, then you had a very tough time? I remember, I think it might have been was it a romance of the three kingdoms or whatever the hell it was yeah yeah where yeah so there was a mode where you had to do it the story way like the actual historical way i remember age of empires 2 being very if you didn't play your race your, your empire the correct way um you would have a very hard time fighting on equal terms as the rest of the empires oh man i oh crap i remember another one where if who did they partner with it had to be one of the um it had to be one of the age games or it had to be one of the total war game no it was total war i don't know if they partnered with history channel or they did a uh an entire special about it oh i remember something like that on the history channel they were yeah, they were doing they were like the mo models for stuff. the fights and stuff they were trying to yep they're trying to use the multiplayer of one of the games to reenact the battles or something. Yeah. I think they did it with Troy. I want to say Troy. Yeah, that would make sense. Why don't we have things like that anymore? That would be awesome. <laughs> That's because they were trying to make um, video games more accepted as well. And there was reasons to do that from the video game perspective. Whereas now it's so common to play video games, like everyone says they play video games now. Yeah, I mean, that, that threshold, it's gotten lower and lower, including phones and everything else, but it's still a lot of people playing games. It's sad that they're playing mostly things like Call of Duty <laughs> or what's the new Farmville on phones? I don't know. doesn't matter, but that kind of thing. Because they've tried to do Total War a couple times now. And I, what do they focus on? On Warhammer? 
um warhammer 40k was one of them they did um i think they did um what was it lord of the rings one that was um, one of my favorites um i think they did uh they did an Antilla one that was pretty good uh, i'm not sure which uh fantasy that they'll do next but they they have a few to pick from if they want the 40k i knew was big for a while um just because the type of people they'll play 40k are the probably the type of people that would be interested in total war game that's true because you know the the board the tabletop 40k is very much like that it is and it's had a revival so a lot of people have come back while they have their own controversies now but that's still a lot more a lot more people than i ever remember came back to play 40k no what i bet would be like something really good for total war is like a, a civil war or revolutionary war total war it's topical now well just because Sorry, of all only, the, all the other um, funny. franchises that have come out recently with something similar i bet total sure. war could do something similar and make a killing as well that might be its own thing but i don't see them doing one like there's i don't see one for napoleon uh, there's a napoleon one it's just old it's just um Oh, okay. It uh, wasn't after Rome. There was one between it, but then there was Napoleon and um, Empire Total War. There was that too. It was basically Napoleon, but all over the world. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. But Napoleon, you were you. It was a lot more story based with Napoleon around, obviously around his character, and so you were actually following him as a character and becoming a general than more than, um, especially at the beginning, than actually doing Total War. You know, now that you mention it, I think I remember watching you play. It's not, uh, it wasn't, um, I felt Napoleon Total War was actually worse than Empire Total War. Really? Just as a, as a Total War franchise, just because um, it was very limiting at the beginning of their campaign versus um, the Empire Total War. Just because you're following Napoleon. Okay, so right there, that is that is proof positive. Strong narrative driven. Um, it's fine if you want to do it the first time or second time, but I think after, I think you should have a skill. They should have uh, enabled a skip option to go like to the fifth battle or whatever when he's become a commander already and basically start as France. Okay, I see. I see what you're saying. Um, it was basically following a bunch of like scrimmages of his career as before he became emperor and um interesting yeah so uh let's go next on our list here well what's the longest franchise you've played the longest as in term of how many games it's put out or the longest in terms of how long i've played it both the one i think's probably the longest um series wise is probably command and conquer yeah probably Although Homeworld might be a good contender. Oh, how, how long is Homeworld around? I don't remember Homeworld 1, but Homeworld 2 was 2003. And they just came out with Homeworld 3 recently. 99. 99. So that might be a good contender because Command Conquer has not released something recently. And I think it was like this year that they came out with Homeworld 3 or last year. Uh, let's see here. Command and Conquer Remaster came out in 2020. It's not new. It's just remastered. Yeah. And how remastered? Is it like the 3D skin they did for Warcraft 3? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, probably a rem- yeah, uh, looks pretty skin. Junk. But Homeworld 3, I think, is new, new. Like like an expansion almost. Yeah, yeah. And Homeworld, the first one. I mean, if I'm looking at this correctly, Homeworld 1 still kind of looks fantastic um, for what it was. Yeah, Homeworld has always been fantastic on the visual front they are really kicking ass wow look at that that that's something that they did really well i don't know how but they have i don't know and then three looks freaking amazing yeah yeah i used to i loved homeworld too um sometimes you just want to be involved in a giant space epic yeah and uh that probably brings in stellaris too (laughs) oh that's true Okay, so that's further to the or point. Eve. Like, yeah, Eve as well. Why is it that you think this hasn't? I mean, before, yeah, it was hard to do on consoles. Now, 
I don't think there's a, any reason why it can't be. Um, it might be hard to control things with a controller. That's true. And I applaud the games like Halo who tried. Command and Conquer definitely tried. They had like, uh, what was it? N64 games, Super Nintendo. But why thinking not? about like all the high competition of like um, StarCraft or Age of Empires, oh, sure. you can't have the APM with a controller. No, but the good part is with all the new consoles, you can just like PlayStation, you could just hook up whatever uh, USB keyboard or I think even wireless now. Um, They could, but I don't know that the same people that are going to have those systems are going to play these games. Most likely not. I would, I would say this genre is almost exclusively PC. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think it just built up on the requirement of having the processing power and the ability to have a full keyboard layout and maybe some extra. Although no there was high- one, I think that I played exclusively on console, Total Annihilation. I, do I know this one? It's um, like a Supreme Commander, but earlier. It's like 90s. I think I do know this one. Yeah, I do. I felt like we've played it once or twice. Yep. It, it is it, it was September 30th of 97 according to Steam and you can purchase it on Steam for 4.99. I think it was I want to say Nintendo 64 or something like that. I'm trying to find it for you now. But it was basically Supreme Commander before Supreme Commander. Oh no, it says this one is or at least the one that I searched Total Annihilation was 97 on Windows and Mac. So if it was on a console as well it doesn't say at least so far. Um, I've played a couple that were good on, on console. Like I didn't think Halo Wars was bad. I thought both of those were decent. Let's see, it's, it's there one. Well, I'm maybe was, That's really, maybe I'm thinking of something else. Could be. But it was it basically uh, good. like Total Annihilation. Hmm. Oh, damn. This is the most recent one that I played to, I guess, completion. Bad North. Played that on the Switch. Oh, Bad North. Yeah, yeah. Great game. Uh, pretty good game. I got bored with it about halfway through. Sure. Just because it did get repetitive it once you figure it out. Like, yeah. What was the other one that I recently played that was fan fucking tastic but needs to actually come out? Let's see here. It is Throne World? Thronefall. That one is phenomenal. Oh, Thronefall. Yeah, yeah. I saw that. Effing phenomenal. That could very easily be on consoles and play well damn there's a bunch of these that i have not heard of I, like ever you've heard of tooth and nail tooth and tail yeah i have that one or tooth and tail never mind okay so um i'm out of the loop n- not something i would recommend though fair enough pikmin doesn't count get out of here <laughs> lord of the rings battle for middle earth 2 one of my favorites lord of the rings lent itself very well to that that genre i want to see a couple more come out like that yeah, I'll have to look more and uh, come back to that some other time. I don't remember the name. Well, there's of it. one that we have that we both played. I gotta find it. Yeah, I don't remember what it was on. It was probably on one of the EA platforms because I remember playing it with you, and I couldn't get anyone else to play with me. Um, let's see. Oh, what about the different subgenres of them? Like what? Which subgenres? So, like the action more action oriented like starcraft to the more i guess builder developer like civ um i don't know i I like all of them what what, what, what specifically you asking what do you think has oh the same like appeal i guess an easier entry point um yeah i think it depends on what you like if you're if you're more into like action games i would say uh the rts that's more um uh, about uh, pumping out units is probably better for you. But um, if you're more into like an economy or a well, well-established economy, then maybe you probably go into builders more, maybe more like Civ or um, not, not to age of mythology, what's the one I'm thinking of? Uh, Pharaoh or those sorts of strategy like builder econo- economy games. Yep. Um, 
which I could see uh, as being described as RTSs because time does matter in those games. Um, I don't know. What's that one that you recently played? Um, they are billions or whatever. They are billions is really good. Yeah. Actually both, uh, me and, uh, the missus like that game and she's not Where's like that uh, a real big gamer. That's an RTS, um, pump out units. Oh, okay. Okay. And it's more of pump out units to defend yourself. So there is some aspect of building. But um, the aspect of building is basically to slow down the enemy. Okay. To slow it's down very while, while, you, wow. you, while you do more DPS. Yeah. 41,000 reviews on Steam. Uh, they are billions. Yeah. 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 They are billions is really pretty Very good. popular. Okay. So it's on the radar. Yeah. I would definitely recommend they are billions to anyone who's uh, an RTS fan. What about somebody who's not an RTS fan, but kind of curious? What's your entry? What's my entry? Yeah. Like, where would you give them as an entry point? Oh, that is hard. Say? Um, that's really hard. Um, it depends on what they like, I guess. They're open and they trust you. Um, they are billions on the lowest difficulty might be a good entry, actually. Okay. Um, it's not that hard. It, gives you an idea of it doesn't punish you that much in the beginning missions. Um, it definitely gets harder um, as you progress, even on the lowest difficulty. And it can be uh, challenging at times, even for the novice. What else would I suggest? If you really want to go ahead, diving into um, something Maybe Company of Heroes, two or three. Iron Harvest. Okay. That might be a good one for you. Um, I heard nine bit I heard good things about nine bit armies that just came out. Um, but I haven't played it yet. That might be a, a funner one. Um can always go back to one of the newest Total Wars if you want to try those. They're they're about the same for most of them. Yeah. Uh, that is a common criticism as people play them. Though it's the same as the last. Yeah, but that's kind of the point. Yeah, yeah. It it has very similar gameplay loop for, um, for the past probably what eight games. <laughs> Sounds about right. But uh, ba- basically, any of the Rome t- Rome Two Plus games are probably are probably fine. If you want to go all the way back to Warcraft Three, you can. That's probably a good entry one. If you want to do some retro gaming, do some Age of Mythology. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Age of Mythology is what I would say. That would be my submission. Um, that or if the Warcraft 3 Reforged or whatever the hell they call it, if that got fixed, then I would say that because it looked pretty good. You know what just got a revamp recently? Um who makes them uh zeus and poseidon um for the economic economic side uh zeus impression games impression games and um so if you're into the economy building stuff or want to be want to try out those are pretty cheap right now and they just had like a reskin or like an update for the newest uh systems uh pharaoh i think and cleopatra uh, same genre of games just different um visual style um so if you're into again the more economy building stuff i would definitely recommend those games they're pretty easy they're pretty easy on the easy settings and pretty difficult on the difficult settings so they have some good uh variability there okay yeah um, um let's see what would you say to somebody oh apparently the dune uh game got good reviews oh damn and nah it's the new dude one recent is mixed the new yes yeah, spice wars yes but the new one i heard uh was okay but um can be overly challenging at times okay and that explains that what if somebody came to you a friend of yours a dear friend of yours not into rts's gamer but they said they wanted to get into something like eve eve 
Mm -hmm. Um, I would say, do you have a lot of free time? (laughs) (laughs) What if the answer is kind of? If the answer is kind of, I would say, don't play Eve. (laughs) (laughs) This is an all in commitment. This is like second and third job, maybe. Oh, damn. Yeah. Yeah. Eve is a, has a steep learning curve. And I don't know that it's that fun. Even, even I've tried going back to it a couple times as like a new character. And although the beginning is less of a learning curve, it's still a lot. And there's just so much flexibility and so much, so many paths you can take. Knowing that path is like researching yourself and it can be a lot. Yeah. Okay, so basically what you're saying is that's a job. It, it, and it's a second it's, and third job. It, yeah. It's not not like one job. It's like two part-time jobs. It's not even it's it's not even over job and overtime. It's a whole ass third job to the second. Yeah, it's Got it's it. like a second job researching on what you should do and a third job actually doing it. Yeah, I don't know why that doesn't sound like fun to everyone and something um, that all should engage in. I knew people that were literally like three monitors and two of them were just like tables and things that they needed to look up while they were playing Eve. I have seen people spreadsheet that game. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's kind of how it is. Yeah. And for people that are really like want everything organized and in a certain place and, you know, are very particular about things, it can be fun because you can do that. Everything can have its place, let's say. So basically what you're telling me is this is obsessive compulsive, slightly on the spectrum delight. Yeah, kind of. Okay, got it. Like like the people that like to min-max things, like those are the type of people they'll like this game. Or if they... they I don't think I have the time. Or if they like want to do some sort of challenge or something and they get off on that. That can be fun for some people, not me, but some people. <laughs> All those souls born players thinking they're hard. <laughs> <laughs> I have a thousand hours into Eve. You don't know what's hard. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably not even a lot. That's probably not even. No, it's not. That's probably <laughs> barely scratching the surface. I have friends who have over 10,000 hours in the game. I can believe that. Yeah. It hurts me, but I can believe it. Well, it's one of those games where like, flight time actually takes like real time so if you're going across the universe might take a little while (laughs) (laughs) oh yeah i definitely can't do that i i definitely don't have the patience for any of that And, and some of those systems might be um susceptible to pirates and things like that so some of them you might actually need to like be at your computer for (laughs) but but there's automation that you can do that you know go a different path and then you your computer just has to be on (laughs) um yeah yeah there's a whole bunch of things you can do neve that could be like it like three podcasts on its own (laughs) i'm sure there's plenty of podcasts that just pertain to eve yeah yeah definitely um, there's one podcast I know of just goes over like battle reports of e- in Eve. Like they just do the servers top, whatever. No, like all the battles that are happening on Eve, how much each side lost in real money oh, because you can convert to real money because you can buy the in currency game for real money. It is that one that people make into a real job. You can. That's true. Aha. Okay. There is a conversion to that virtual currency and real, real currency. Bloody nuts. And there was one war that I know of several participants in that um, was over a billion dollars, I think, on each side lost. Oh, my God. Yeah. Or maybe it was a billion dollars all said and done, but it was still like nuts. (laughs) Well, we hit the B word very little after that matters yeah it's like i'm like and uh i i heard from people at the time that like 
they were having, they were getting kicked out of the servers and stuff like that because there were that many people participating and they would come back oh and, God. you know, they wouldn't have put up their shield or whatever at the right time or activated their shield at the right time and lost their shirt. Yep. Literally. So the entry point isn't Eve. Yeah. It's not Eve. I, I would suggest door fortress before Eve. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I was intentionally trying not to mention that one. Um, Door Fortress just got reskin, so it makes things uh, more novice friendly. More novice friendly. Having said that, it is not one that I would recommend for a novice. No, you, that's another one. You got to be in the life, and not quite Eve level, but in the life. And you can it can be fun for some people, even people who are new to the genre. Just uh, it's definitely for a very specific type of people. It's, it's for the people who like making plans and then executing them. Or people that um, are really about lore. Uh, Dungeon, Door Fortress can be a really good one for. Oh, okay. I didn't even think of that. Um, if they're really into lore of a world, they have some fantastic lore writing that your creations get written into, whether they live or die. And you can um, have uh, like... Um, let's say failed expeditions that can be rediscovered on the same like world or whatever, um, by a different expedition. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And there might be some mythology and things like that, um, that evolve around that. Huh? Okay. Yeah. Um, the lore on door fortress is so deep. It's, it's crazy. How much of it is user contributed? Um, depends on how many failed expeditions you have. Like the more you interact with it, the more, um, things can be generated from what you've put into it. Okay. So if you're like, you know, this expedition was good for a while and successful and create a town or whatever, or trade post or something, then it interacts with the world more. And yeah. Good for them. I mean... Yeah, it's it's a very it unique... It didn't capture my attention. It's a very unique thing that, unless you play a lot of, you won't discover. Yeah, I've had like a dwarf create like a legendary mug, and that mug got sold, so my place got more rep. And then um, literally another trade caravan came in because they had made a statue to that guy who created the mug because it was such a good mug. <laughs> what kind of fucking mug did he make? Yeah. Like, like basically like it's the mug of God or whatever. Um, so I think it was a Ruby encrusted mug of, um, sportsmanship or something like that. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, it was, it sold for something like, 23,000 gold pieces which is like more than my town was worth at the time <laughs> <laughs> and so um, some of your units or dorbs in this case can get in these like fevers where they like become either possessed or like um, I, I get inspired or whatever and make these like really cool creations that actually affect the world and actually like generate some lore and stuff so this has come a long way. Um, this was in the original game. Just way. it was it was um, not visually appealing. Hmm. But yeah, the more you play Door Fortress, the more you get out of it. Same with Eve. Okay, that's cool. Same with Eve. The more you play, the more you get out of it. I like that concept because now it seems like most games, the more you play, the less. Yeah, and, or and that's you hit a that point where it's just diminishing returns. Yeah, that's the. Um, idea behind games like that um minecraft's a little bit like that the more you play the more you get out of it they just celebrated a birthday now yeah i think they, they did i don't remember which one was it 10 10 years i, I, I want to say 10 something like that sounds about right good for them they've done a lot with that too yeah so what um let me flip it back on you what what are your normie um games that you would suggest i would pick something like so depends on the person um if i'm going to give it like a general 
I might pick something like um, Bad North or Thronefall. Yeah, Bad or North. Or if they were actually Fall committed, might be good uh, good suggestions for now, right now. Yeah, right. It's kind of artistic. It's fun. It's engaging. It's quick. Um, it the difficulty ramps up pretty well for what I would when I was playing. You know, not like everything was super easy, and then all of a sudden you hit a wall. Every time you played, everywhere, like every new increment was add a unit, add a type of building, add a layer of development. Pretty cool. What's something that I haven't considered that uh, that I probably wouldn't suggest unless it was a normie? It's a game called Circle oh. Empires. Oh, I've never heard of it. Yeah, it's basically like um, a circle grid. Like you, you, the grid's connected with these like circle islands. And um, you basically have these little warriors that you can spawn or some little like mining of each circle. Some circles have different resources and you can spawn units from them and uh, attack the next circle or whatever to expand your empire. And once you get control of that circle, you can mine its resources and et cetera, et cetera. Interesting. I feel like I've seen games like that. Yeah, it, it's just like a can be a very quick or um expansive game depending on how how big your grid is um it's easy to get into and easy to understand um they have some light upgrades so uh, as your units um get upgraded they get tougher and stuff um so there there's a good um progression system on units who have fought a lot great entry level interesting uh, entry level for rts's though Okay. It's probably not something you'd stick with a long time, but it, it's pretty, uh, helps you understand RTSs pretty well. Yeah, I do feel like this is a genre of game that has such a steep learning curve to it. Maybe, I don't know if it actually has a steep learning curve. Maybe it just seems like it's a very complex thing to get into. Um, I feel like if you like strategy games at all, you should give RTSs. It's, it's that, um, that in between between strategy and action games i feel Mm -hmm. and so if you like either of those genres you might like this genre i agree it's definitely an underrepresented genre among like main whatever the main uh starcraft was huge starcraft was huge but starcraft 2 wings of liberty is dead Um, i mean people still play it but i mean development is gone yeah, the development's gone, but the competitive nature of StarCraft and StarCraft 2 still exists. That's uh, because Korea still exists. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter if it's just one country, buddy. It still exists. <laughs> I'm not saying they don't matter. I'm saying that there's a, <laughs> they've played Brood War more than I think anybody's ever played any video game ever. Well, that should be like a statement of, you know, maybe so a lot of people would like it. <laughs> Especially if you're That's Korean, apparently. <laughs> They just, they just dominate every one of those damn competitions. Well, um, for Americans, I think we get more involved when it's like Company of Heroes and things like that. Um, Iron Harvest is probably another one that Stellaris. See, I didn't even know that people were playing Iron Harvest competitively. Um, I feel like their multiplayer matches are only competitive. <laughs> right. It's... um. It feels very company of heroes to me. So I I wasn't that into it. I, okay. So company of heroes is, I have a love hate relationship with company of heroes. I thought it was inventive because it wasn't just, here's a unit and it shoots guns and then it's beaten by the tank unit. Yeah, it definitely had, um, that's beaten by like the mortar. The first company of heroes had a very solid like rock, paper, scissors system. Mm-hmm. Um, Company of Heroes 2, I felt like they expanded or made that so convoluted that it was hard to grasp. Um, okay. And because, because of that, in Companies of Hero 2, I felt it was harder to play. Oh, yeah. They either oh, expanded yeah. that mean- or did away with that or... They did something to it that the rock paper system felt broken. (laughs) So they expanded on moments that I remember from it were 
only having infantry men out and encountering a tank or something yep. like that, or somebody was just really on the move. And then you can obscure a line of sight. That was nuts. Elevation matters. Yeah. Um, you could obscure line of sight and um, the, the special abilities I felt in one were just to give like if you lost the rock paper system system, they were ways to deal with that system. If you were lose if you're on the losing side of that and um, in companies of heroes, too, I felt the abilities were like basically um, whatever was in your way it dealt with it yeah and so i felt like companies here too was i need to memorize that all my units abilities which i didn't want to do rather than reading the text on and companies heroes one where um i felt it was more for special situations of when i was losing and i i would you know what two reminded me of what Yu-Gi-Oh. Yep, yep, kind of. Oh, I'll play my trap card. I'll reverse it, this, that, you know, it going back and forth because like you would get caught out. Oh, there's a tank. Well, I have a grenadier. Yeah, um, that's oddly enough, Company of Heroes 2 and Company of Heroes do feel like a lot like um, the representative uh, representation of a card games to me. Because it's like you had a counter you could put down. Yeah, it was basically like I was throwing unit, like, like it was kind of like... Um, magic where i was Mm -hmm. throwing units against your units and we both had about the same number of units just uh depending on some things maybe i could focus one that wasn't against that one or maybe i could rush one or you know with two units or something yeah i i definitely think that um company of heroes had a really interesting take on the whole rta genre and then maybe it went a little bit too complex you have me play it was world of goo or something gray goo gray goo gray goo yeah it was it's all right it was pretty good um it lacked a lot of the finishing details yeah, that it, it feel felt unfinished to me that's what it was mm-hmm. yeah that one definitely uh it had solid bones but needed needed some actual like good development behind it and it didn't get that attention yeah was that the one you were thinking of earlier where we played together but only I would play with you. Oh, bloody hell. What the hell was that one now? I'm not going to remember now. Okay. <laughs> what are your most nostalgic RTS moments? Um, so most nostalgic, greatest moments that I had. Um, who a couple good ones. They were really the first games that I played multiplayer over the internet. Oh. So there's a bunch of memories of, of that, you know, duo queuing with you with random strangers oh uh with star it's trek. always yeah, fun yeah. oh, oh star trek. trek yeah and then also doing that in age of mythology mm. it was a very fun and interesting thing to do maybe not all the time and maybe it's just rose tinted goggles glasses whatever the hell you want to call it major infrastructure creation all your your bag i'm gonna zerg the shit out of them what is the fastest, cheapest unit? Yeah, I would go like small army because I was always Protoss and you were always Zerg. So you go like fast, like crazy army that would basically occupy them until I could build up. And then I would come in with the, the slow decked out army of Protoss and just, uh, oh, I went carriers a lot. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, what the hell? Oh my god, what what is the um the name of the Zerg gathering unit? Um drones. Or is it just drones? So I remember there was a strategy that I saw somebody use where you built a bunch of drones to harass people because they could attack. Um, and it was hilarious. I think all of them could attack, just I thought um I thought drones were slightly cheaper or something. They, I think they are the cheapest ones, yeah. Protoss are the most expensive. I knew it was 50 for Protoss for their, I think they were called drones too. Pro, no, probes, probes. Yes. You know what was really fun for me in RTS gaming moments? Discovering I could blow up sheep in Warcraft 2 by clicking on them multiple times. Oh, yeah. And on the alternate voice <laughs> lines for each unit. But I just clicking on them multiple times. That was like one of the funnest things for me, discovering that. 
So Wings of Liberty brought that back where if you clicked on units enough, they would get annoyed with you. Yeah, yeah. Um, also in StarCraft and the campaign, Kerrigan becoming the Queen of Blades. Hmm. Iconic. Yeah, that was mind mind blowing. I I was like, I, I like really cared that like Ker- Kerrigan got captured, and <laughs> I was like, holy shit, she's go- going to become a Zerg. What the fuck? <laughs> oh man, same story. And um, I don't hmm. red alert the fall of the Statue of Liberty. I don't know I that that just hit me growing up uh, where we did. Well, yeah, because we were so. Very close. Not even an hour. Yeah, very close. Oh, man. Okay, fine. I could contribute one moment like that. That, I mean, the ones that you mentioned, yes, but also Frozen Throne. Uh, Frozen Throne. That intro cinematic. Yeah, yeah. Fucking crazy. Agreed. Coming home from school, hearing that it was up, going to the website to watch it, like, holy shit. Yeah. Maybe it's just all nostalgia. Oh, um... Who is his name? The Prot- uh, the Protoss com- campaign when he takes the cruiser into uh, the Zerg hive. Oh, oh, oh. Um, the, um, oh God, what was he? The Dark, whatever the hell. What was his name? Zeratul? Yes. Um, Z- Zeratul, uh, yeah, him taking the, the like, blow, blowing up cruiser into the hive and that cinematic. That, that was pretty epic. I don't know how. So I don't know. I wouldn't assume that these type of games would be able to have the type of story that they did. Well, they were like basically mini movies to give you the story. And then the actual play was, you know, not the same. Whereas a lot of nowadays, the actual game can be a lot very similar in graphics quality to the actual movie. That's true. So maybe there's not the Blizzard uh, cinematics. Yeah, maybe there's a lot less um, transition, let's say, from what's a cinematic now to um, actual gameplay. What in the hell did I just stumble on? (laughs) What did you stumble upon? (laughs) Battle.net, something or other with StarCraft, and then you could buy things for... Whose currency is NT? NT, I don't know. No, I don't either. Doesn't matter. Um, Oh, Abathur. Yeah, the way that that story developed was crazy. Is that the new Taiwan dollar? Oh, maybe. Could be. It's irrelevant anyway. Okay. Moving on in the forwardly direction of RTS games. <laughs> no, I think we're there. I think I think we covered our enjoyment and nostalgia, how right. it kind of shapes what we play. One um, game I didn't mention that I just want to give a shout out to, Defcon. Ooh, good one. Just because I, I know it was on my list and I didn't want to forget it. There any uh, shout out you want to make? To a particular game? No. I mean, well. That maybe we didn't mention or cover? Yeah, I guess Helldivers 1 was kind of rts but it was an ISO shooter. So maybe not. It still maintains some of the aspects. And I think people like those aspects. And I think that is a strong backbone for that game. So maybe they they're playing that or that type of game they could transition over without too much uh difficulty yeah there are a bunch of turn-based ones i feel like might lead you into an rts but uh i feel like rts is just more action oriented or there's no like um there's not enough time for the turn-based that maybe you want to strategize over so i feel like some Sometimes, like people who play those games are going to um, get dissuaded from RTSs. Yeah, it could definitely seem like a big time sink, especially when you look around and the popular ones are. They get very competitive very quick. They do. And they also get recently, a lot of them have become, um, I feel, an up in difficulty Mm -hmm. from both a learning perspective and a play perspective. I feel like. the difficulty has gone up like normal is now what used to be hard and easy is now what used to be normal. Maybe just because there are more gamers and so more people are um, more skilled than they were. But I used to very enjoy just putting things on easy sometimes and feeling like a God. 
<laughs> yeah, mindlessly destroying. Um, I think the general sentiment across gaming now is more challenge oriented. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I see a lot of challenge ever since some um, channels. You ever since like the second Souls game, right? Yeah, probably. Because I don't know, Demon Souls when that launched, it didn't. It wasn't super popular. That was a very niche game. But I felt like a lot more people played it than I expected to play it at the time, too. Oh, sure. And then now, like, if you would have told me back then that it would probably be the most popular game that's out to watch and to play whenever it launches for two months, three months, I, I wouldn't believe you. Like, nobody's going to catch on to this. It's hard. It's very abstract. There's not a lot of, like, there's no structure to it that people are used to. And, I mean, it seems like we're departing from the handholding. Yeah, it seems like no fuck you is the sentiment right now of gaming. Yeah. So, hey, listen, I'm appreciative of it. I'm not, I'm not angry with it. I don't know that I'm angry with it. I just feel like not all games need to go in that direction. Correct. And I felt, I currently feel like 90 or more percent of games are going in that direction. And I don't like that. Gotta hit it while it's hot, baby. I don't like that aspect. Yeah, me either, which is why I don't play most of them. I pick and choose which ones I'm going to dabble in. Yep. That's uh, all I had, though. Same. What was your developing news from before? Shh, it's a stakeout. What was your favorite RTS again? Probably StarCraft. We should really invest in tracking for for every employee. We we already have that. Hmm. Well, that does it. Madam Secretary, take care of the rest. Surviving staff, the board meetings have concluded. It is now safe to resume normal work functions. Hazard signs will be placed at all biological spill sites. Watch your step. The injured will be humanely recycled into vegan lunch options for underprivileged inner city children. This is a green company after all. There will be Fig Newtons in crystal light in the break room for those allowed breaks. It's a long one. Three minutes for each of you. And don't touch my apple slices. <laughs> Where you can. The next board meetings will be soon. God remains dead, and we have killed him. <laughs>